field emission is emission of electrons induced by an electrostatic field. The most common context is field emission from a solid surface into vacuum. However, field emission can take place from solid or liquid surfaces, into vacuum, air, a fluid, or any non-conducting or weakly conducting dielectric. The field induced promotion of electrons from the valence to conduction band of semiconductors can also be regarded as a form of field emission. The terminology is historical because related phenomena of surface photo effect, thermionic emission and cold electronic emission, i.e., the emission of electrons in strong static electric fields, were discovered and studied independently from the 1880s to 1930s. When field emission is used without qualifiers it typically means cold emission. Field emission in pure metals occurs in high electric fields. The gradients are typically higher than 1 gigavolt per meter and strongly dependent upon the work function. Electron sources based on field emission have a number of applications, but it is most commonly an undesirable primary source of vacuum breakdown and electrical discharge phenomena, which engineers work to prevent. Examples of applications for surface field emission include construction of bright electron sources for high-resolution electron microscopes or to discharge spacecraft from induced charges. Devices which eliminate induced charges are termed charge neutralizers. Field emission was explained by quantum tunneling of electrons in the late 1920s. This was one of the triumphs of the nascent quantum mechanics. The theory of field emission from bulk metals was proposed by Ralph H. Fowler and Lothar Wolfgang Nordheim, a family of approximate equations, Fowler-Nordheim equations, is named after them. Strictly, Fowler-Nordheim equations apply only to field emission from bulk metals and to other bulk crystalline solids but they are often used, as a rough approximation, to describe field emission from other materials. In some respects, field electron emission is a paradigm example of what physicists mean by tunneling. Unfortunately, it is also a paradigm example of the intense mathematical difficulties that can arise. Simple solvable models of the tunneling barrier lead to equations that get predictions of emission current density too low by a factor of 100 or more. If one inserts a more realistic barrier model into the simplest form of the Schrödinger equation, then an awkward mathematical problem arises over the resulting differential equation. It is known to be mathematically impossible in principle to solve this equation exactly in terms of the usual functions of mathematical physics or in any simple way. To get even an approximate solution, it is necessary to use special approximate methods known in physics as semi-classical or quasi-classical methods. Worse, a mathematical error was made in the original application of these methods to field emission, and even the corrective theory that was put in place in the 1950s has been formally incomplete until very recently. A consequence of these difficulties has been a heritage of misunderstanding and disinformation that still persists in some current field emission research literature. This article tries to present a basic account of field emission for the 21st century and beyond that is free from these confusions, terminology and conventions. Field electron emission, field induced electron emission, Field emission and electron field emission are general names for this experimental phenomenon in its theory. The first name is used here. Fowler-Nordheim tunneling is the wave mechanical tunneling of electrons through a rounded triangular barrier created at the surface of an electron conductor by applying a very high electric field. Individual electrons can escape by Fowler-Nordheim tunneling from many materials in various different circumstances. 
Cold field electron emission is the name given to a particular statistical emission regime, in which the electrons in the emitter are initially in internal thermodynamic equilibrium, and in which most emitted electrons escape by Fowler-Nordheim tunneling from electron states close to the emitter Fermi level. Many solid and liquid materials can emit electrons in a CFE regime if an electric field of an appropriate size is applied. Fowler-Nordheim type equations are a family of approximate equations derived to describe CFE from the internal electron states in bulk metals. The different members of the family represent different degrees of approximation to reality. Approximate equations are necessary because, for physically realistic models of the tunneling barrier, it is mathematically impossible in principle to solve the Schrödinger equation exactly in any simple way. There is no theoretical reason to believe that Fowler-Nordheim type equations validly describe field emission from materials other than bulk, crystalline solids. For metals, the CFE regime extends to well above room temperature. There are other electron emission regimes that require significant external heating of the emitter. There are also emission regimes where the internal electrons are not in thermodynamic equilibrium and the emission current is, partly or completely, determined by the supply of electrons to the emitting region. A non-equilibrium emission process of this kind may be called field emission if most of the electrons escape by tunneling. But strictly it is not CFE, and is not accurately described by a Fowler-Nordheim type equation. Care is necessary because in some contexts, the name field emission is applied to the field-induced emission of ions, rather than electrons. And because in some theoretical contexts, field emission is used as a general name covering both field electron emission and field ion emission. Historically, the phenomenon of field electron emission has been known by a variety of names, including the AONA effect, auto-electronic emission, cold emission, cold cathode emission, field emission, field electron emission, and electron field emission. Equations in this article are written using the international system of quantities. An older field emission literature often writes some equations using an older equation system that does not use the quantity epsilon zero. In this article, all such equations have been converted to modern international form. For clarity, this should always be done. Since work function is normally given in electron volts, and it is often convenient to measure fields in volts per nanometer, values of most universal constants are given here in units involving the FV and nanometer. Increasingly, this is normal practice in field emission research. However, all equations here are ISQ compatible equations and remain dimensionally consistent, as is required by the modern international system. To indicate their status, numerical values of universal constants are given to seven significant figures. Values are derived using the 2006 values of the fundamental constants. Early history of field electron emission Field electron emission has a long, complicated and messy history. This section covers the early history, up to the derivation of the original Fowler-Nordheim type equation in 1928. In retrospect, it seems likely that the electrical discharges reported by Winkler in 1744 were started by CFE from his wire electrode. However, meaningful investigations had to wait until after J.J. Thomson's identification of the electron in 1897, and until after it was understood, from thermal emission and photoemission work, that electrons could be emitted from inside metals, and that, in the absence of applied fields, electrons escaping from metals had to overcome a work function barrier. It was suspected at least as early as 1913 that field-induced emission was a separate physical effect. However, only after vacuum and specimen cleaning techniques had significantly improved did this become well established. Lilienfeld published in 1922 the first clear account in English of the experimental phenomenology of the effect he had called autoelectronic emission.
He had worked on this topic in Leipzig since about 1910. Klein describes this another early work. After 1922, experimental interest increased, particularly in the groups led by Millikan at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, and by Gosling at the General Electric Company in London. Attempts to understand auto-electronic emission included plotting experimental current voltage data in different ways to look for a straight-line relationship. Current increased with voltage more rapidly than linearly, but plots of type versus V were not straight. Schottky suggested in 1923 that the effect might be due to thermally induced emission over a field-reduced barrier. If so, then plots of type versus V one half should be straight, but they were not. Nor is Schottky's explanation compatible with the experimental observation of only very weak temperature dependence in CFE, a point initially overlooked. A breakthrough came when Lauritsen found that plots of type versus 1 v yielded good straight lines. This result, published by Millikan and Lauritsen in early 1928, was known to Fowler and Nordheim. Oppenheimer had predicted that the field-induced tunneling of electrons from atoms would have this I dependence, had found this dependence in the published experimental field emission results of Millikan and Eyring, and proposed that CFE was due to field-induced tunneling of electrons from atomic-like orbitals in surface metal atoms. An alternative Fowler-Nordheim theory explained both the Millikan-Loritzen finding and the very weak dependence of current on temperature. Fowler-Nordheim theory predicted both to be consequences if CFE were due to field-induced tunneling from free electron-type states in what we would now call a metal conduction band, with the electron states occupied in accordance with Fermi-Dirac statistics. In fact, Oppenheimer had mathematical details of his theory seriously incorrect. There was also a small numerical error in the final equation given by Fowler-Nordheim theory for CFE current density. This was corrected in the 1929 paper of, strictly, if the barrier field in Fowler-Nordheim 1928 theory is exactly proportional to the applied voltage. And if the emission area is independent of voltage, then the Fowler-Nordheim 1928 theory predicts that plots of the form versus 1 v should be exact straight lines. However, contemporary experimental techniques were not good enough to distinguish between the Fowler-Nordheim theoretical result and the millikan lauritsen experimental result. Thus, by 1928 basic physical understanding of the origin of CFE from bulk metals had been achieved, and the original Fowler-Nordheim type equation had been derived. The literature often presents Fowler-Nordheim work as a proof of the existence of electron tunneling, as predicted by wave mechanics. Whilst this is correct, the validity of wave mechanics was largely accepted by 1928. The more important role of the Fowler-Nordheim paper was that it was a convincing argument from experiment that Fermi-Dirac statistics applied to the behavior of electrons in metals. As suggested by Sommerfeld in 1927, the success of Fowler-Nordheim theory did much to support the correctness of Sommerfeld's ideas, and greatly helped to establish modern electron band theory. In particular, the original Fowler-Nordheim type equation was one of the first to incorporate the statistical mechanical consequences of the existence of electron spin into the theory of an experimental condensed matter effect. The Fowler-Nordheim paper also established the physical basis for a unified treatment of field-induced and thermally-induced electron emission. Prior to 1928 it had been hypothesized that two types of electrons, thermions and conduction electrons, existed in metals, and that thermally emitted electron currents were due to the emission of thermions, but that field-emitted currents were due to the emission of conduction electrons. The Fowler-Nordheim 1928 work suggested that thermions did not need to exist as a separate class of internal electrons. Electrons could come from a single band occupied in accordance with Fermi-Dirac statistics.
but would be emitted in statistically different ways under different conditions of temperature and applied field. The ideas of Oppenheimer, Fowler and Nordheim were also an important stimulus to the development by Gurney and Condon, later in 1928, of the theory of the radioactive decay of nuclei.